I keep hearing this phrase, the science is settled. But what if I told you, nutrition science isn't science at all. In this video, I'm going to show you that the evidence that people rely on, especially doctors, isn't real evidence at all. And why anyone claiming certainty in the area of nutrition is either misinformed or selling you something. You'll hear it all the time. Studies show red meat is bad. Studies prove butter clogs arteries. Studies say olive oil is heart healthy. It all sounds so certain, so definitive. But dig even slightly below the surface and you'll find it's not science. It's surveys. It's guesswork. And it's built on assumptions that no one questions. Here's how most nutrition studies work. They ask people what they ate. Not yesterday, last year. They give them a food frequency questionnaire. And they ask them to estimate, how often did you eat red meat? How often did you eat whole grains? How often do you drink sugary beverages? Then they take those answers, plug them into a statistical model, and guess which foods correlate with disease. That's it. No controlled setting. No accounting for ultra-processed junk. No controlling for alcohol, sugar, stress, sleep, seed oils, or anything else. Let's say someone eats butter and ends up with heart disease. Was it the butter? Or was it the toast, the sugar, the chips, the late-night alcohol, the chronic stress? Was the butter slathered on a croissant that came along with a sugary cafe latte? Or was it eaten with steak and eggs after an eight-hour fast? None of that gets tracked. It just gets averaged out and labelled saturated fat intake. And then we're told butter caused the problem. That's not evidence, that's narrative. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Nutrition science isn't actually science. Because science is supposed to be replicable. If one lab gets a result, another lab should be able to replicate it under the same conditions. But nutrition studies can't do that. 10,000 randos filling out food frequency questionnaires is not replicable. You ate toast three times last week. What kind of bread? What toppings? What else did you eat that day? Were you hungover? Stressed? Sick? None of that gets tracked. It all gets blurred together. And of course, when different researchers run similar tests in other places or times, they often get different results. That's the definition of non-replicable. And if you can't replicate it, it's not science. If every time you throw a rock into the air, it doesn't eventually land on the ground, we have to rethink what gravity means. Let's put it in different terms. Imagine a murder trial. A man is accused of murder and we find out that he was at the scene of the crime when it happened. So, sounds pretty convincing. But now imagine this. You discover that 10 other people were at the crime scene at the same time. Suddenly things look very different. That's nutrition science. We see one food next to a disease and we assume guilt without thinking about what else might be going on. We don't have cause and effect, we have proximity and speculation. I recently heard a doctor say it's ridiculous to suggest that butter is healthier than olive oil, because studies say otherwise. In fact, this is a really short video, so let's watch it together. So he's saying that olive oil is good for you and so is butter. That is actually not true. In every study where they've taken butter out and substituted for a polyunsaturated fat like olive oil, outcomes actually improved. Okay, two things. You cannot say with any level of certainty, as you are here, that butter is worse or better than olive oil because everything I've just discussed. Second, those studies that replaced butter with olive oil and outcomes improved, what controls were there? What controls? Like, how do we know what else contributed to those better results? 
you have no idea. Because this would all have been based on food frequency questionnaires. We're not locking people into a lab and only allowing them to eat exactly the same food as everyone else and making sure that there is no butter and that any time they would have used butter, it's now olive oil. You're not doing that. So it's not worth the paper it's written on. And the fact that you talk with such certainty about it seems disingenuous. Let's listen to the rest. There's only a few seconds left. So if you want to eat butter, eat butter. I really don't care, but don't sell yourself this fantasy that it, it is actually good for you and you shouldn't be eating sticks of butter. And I know he's not doing that. I know this guy. Um, but the point is, don't make up science or bend the science. Or well, hang on, hang on, hang on. Who's making up science here? Who's bending the science here? Who, I mean, actually, truth be told, who's talking about science at all here? No one. Because there is no science. Or, you know, twist it in a way to, like, justify what you're doing. You want to eat some butter? Eat some butter. I do it too. But I'm not telling myself that it's some magical healthy thing and it's not going to clog my arteries. Uh, I obviously take a statin and my LDL is very low. But still, we don't need to do this. You want to eat butter? Eat some damn butter. Nobody cares. But don't go around thinking this like has some magical properties or it's healthy for you. Same thing with olive oil. If you substitute out, it is better for you, but don't think you're just going to down gallons of it and feel better. The last thing I'd be doing is downing gallons of olive oil. But anyway, so just to summarize, if someone was eating butter and had health issues, what else were they eating? In fact, what else were they doing? Unless you control for all of that, the data is meaningless. So why is the science pushed so hard? Simple, because if they admit the science isn't solid, the entire system starts to fall apart. And then the food industry can't slap heart-healthy labels on things. The pharmaceutical industry can't push pills based on fear. And the medical system loses their illusion of certainty. So they just say the science is settled. Trust the science. And they'll keep saying it until you stop asking questions. But you want real evidence? Look at the people getting off meds. Look at the ones losing weight, reversing disease and feeling better. People who are healing by doing the exact opposite of the guidelines. That's not anecdote, that's results. Replicated over and over again by people who have failed by the system. You want to call that unscientific? Fine but it works. The next time someone says the science is settled, ask them this. Settled for who? Because it isn't settled for the millions of people suffering from obesity, diabetes, autoimmune issues, and chronic fatigue. And if you want to see how we got here, check out this video next.